all ministries, for our startups and agencies, have all been actively involved in the Lagos State Government's drive towards actualizing its themes agenda. With over a few days short of its two-year stay in office of the Babajide Sanwolu administration, the ministries are rendering an account of their successes and challenges so far in office. There is an increase in domestic violence, particularly those perpetrated by women. The Commissioner for Women Affairs and Poverty Elevation, Cecilia Balaji Dada, said the state recorded over 400 cases of domestic violence in 2020. 46 men were violated in the year 2020, while 378 women were violated. I must mention this, that this is the report of the Ministry of Women Affairs. Some people go straight to Ministry of Justice. Some go straight to the police station. But for us at the Ministry, we were able to intervene in issues of 46 male and 378 female in 2020. And in the year 2021, from January to date, we've had 43 men report gender-based or domestic violence issues and 286 women. She, however, noted that 286 cases have already been reported in the first quarter of 2021. The commissioner, who was speaking at the state's annual ministerial briefing, said the increasing numbers also are an indication of the willingness of the residents, particularly the men, to seek intervention and mediation rather than retaliation. There was also advocacy campaign, sensitization and awareness workshop for men, perpetrators and young boys against rape. UNFPA, WAPA had a collaboration and religious leaders were invited and um, they were sensitized on how to curb domestic violence and gender-based violence in the 20 local governments in Lagos State. Aggressive advocacy campaign and sensitization workshop in city, rural and riverine areas on domestic violence. This is to create awareness in the rural and riverine areas on curbing domestic violence in Lagos in the five administrative zones. The reason for this is to expose the effect of domestic violence to residents of rural and riverine areas in Lagos State, enlightening rural and riverine areas on government support to stop the menace of domestic violence. The Ministry of Agriculture is also giving its account in its past two years in office. The Commissioner for Agriculture, Abisola Ulusanya, while revealing the periodic subsidy invested in lake rice, says the government must avoid regulating the price so as to enable investors to realize their profit margins. It is a function of the interplay between balancing private sector investment and ensuring that they are able to flourish so that they provide jobs for our youth, for our women and for all our sundry. And between the state intervening in such a way that it makes it unprofitable for the private sector to thrive, you have to try and find a balance around it. So it's not like lake rice is missing to the extent that it will never resurface again. It's just a function of finding the right time to also intervene. The commissioner also gave reasons for the recent demolition of unlicensed abattoirs, especially during the pandemic. If you consider, uh, consider the COVID-19 uh, virus or the COVID uh, pandemic, you will see that it is an eruption of a zoonotic disease from a wet market. So it has to do with meat, which is why the vet department takes its job very seriously around ensuring that we have sanitized meat spaces. Headquarters of banks here. Lagos has all it takes. I mean, when you consider that it is the economic nerve center of Nigeria, it only makes sense that this should be a hub for processing. And we are also the largest market. Any good you think of, any product, it must find its way to Lagos, which is why value addition is key for us here. The Lagos state government has also reviewed plans to rejuvenate two slum communities on the mainland in order to make them a modern micro city. The Commissioner for Physical Planning and Urban Development said several low-income communities, especially on the Lagos Island, 
will be renovated in order to improve the economic viability of the residents of the communities and improve access to the areas. The commissioner, speaking at the state's ministerial briefing for 2021, said Otto and Utumara are in need of resuscitation in order to match developments set to be seen at the National Arts Theatre. We are doing our uh, stakeholder engagement. We are talking to the people. We are looking at the site variables and its conditions, and we are doing a profiling of the people who are inhabitants of that settlement uh, with a view to, to come up with a, a plan that is acceptable to all and that will improve the living conditions and lifestyle of those people. But we are looking at housing, housing facilities that will not only be commensurate with the National Theatre, but will be uh, of international standards. And I can tell you there will be no displacement because we will be doing the regeneration activities in situ. Over 939 million naira contributed by public and private individuals were spent to resuscitate 10,000 businesses affected by the NSAS protest in Lagos. The Commissioner for Wealth Creation and Employment, Mrs. Yetunde Arubieke, says the state government sees unemployment and underemployment as a major cause for the looting witness during the aftermath of the protest. The Commissioner said the state government is looking to improve the business environment for its youth through the Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. We have Ministry of Youth themselves who have a lot of programs that are targeted to attending to our youths and getting them engaged. But one thing that is main is that it's equally one of our pivotal programs in the ministry, making sure they engage, making sure we meet up with their dreams, with LSCTF and impacting them with economic, you know, in the work will make them viable. This is Yetunde Arubieke, while briefing journalists at the state's annual ministerial briefing, also reviewed plans to create a leather hub in the state, along with a virtual artisan hub in order to improve connectivity for small business owners. By just pressing the link, pressing your area where you are, and getting the list of all artisans, pick your artisans, you will have his details, you will have his telephone number, you will have his address. Call him up and tell him you need this service. And at the end of it all, there is a feedback portion of the portal. We have Cobblers Association, we have those who really sell the, the uh, letters themselves, we have exporters of this letter, we brought them all into a hall. The Lagos State Governor has promised a swift implementation of the Visitation Panel's report on the crisis rocking the Vice Chancellor position in the Lagos State University. What we're presenting to you this afternoon is the report of our findings observations and recommendations in three volumes by the Special Administration Panel for your consideration. Permit me to say, sir, and emphatically for that matter, and without, as it were, any scintilla of equivocation, that our findings, our observations and recommendations are based on the memoranda submitted to us. And the face-to-face -face interactions and interviews that we had with many of the people that submitted memoranda, and who indeed, it will surprise you, held very opposing, disparate, at times antagonistic views and positions on the matter of the appointment of a night vice chancellor for the Lagos State University. The governor, who received a three part report from the special visitation panel comprising vastly experienced academia and legal practitioners, said there is a need to ensure transparency in the process of selecting a new VCE for the school in order to abate further crises. The governor, 
who is a visitor of the school, promised swift implementation of the report once its conclusions tallies with the established information and appointing new head. This panel, headed by able and capable Professor Pantale Omoli, was constituted in accordance with the provision of Section 23 of the Lagos State University Law, Chapter L69, Volume 7, the laws of the Lagos State in, 25th, as in the year 2015. And you can see that, indeed, they have demonstrated all of the responsibility that were passed on to the panel. They were set up to ensure transparency, the constitution of the visitation panel, request for submission of memoranda by the public, and this was immediately publicized in three major national newspaper, three major television stations um, to create that commercial and the public awareness to give everyone an equal opportunity to be heard and to participate. This effort is geared towards ensuring that there is equity, there's fairness, there's a transparent process, there's openness, and like I said, there's a level playing ground for all of the process of selection to ensure that the best and the most qualified person that will draw the vision of our established university that was laid by our founding fathers emerge at the end of this very important process. Nigerian online comedy sensation known as Ikorodu Boys visited the governor of Ajide Songulu at the Lagos State House Marina. The group were elated to meet with the governor as they showed him some of their skits. We know just black we cops too. We pull ourselves over later. <laughs> Bad boys for life. Bad boys. Bad boys. Hey, what, what you, you gonna, gonna do? do? What you gonna do? Hey, hey, uh huh. No, no, never, never, y'all will never do that again. And you fucking up the lyrics. It take a long time to learn. A bad boy is for life. First of all, I am really, really happy to, to be here and to be like telling you these things. Because this is like what we've been hoping and aspiring. Like one day we'll have the chance to tell our story to the governor of Lagos State and we are so, so happy and privileged to be here. So basically, um, it was just us in our house in a corridor. Yeah. Uh, no lies. Everybody knows Ikorudu. They'd be like, oh, this is a very local place, this and that. So we do play and stuff, do very funny things at home. And we do make our mom and dad laugh. So um, when I was in Unilag, the University of Lagos, um, my second year um, during the holiday time. So it, um, it was a very long break for us. So I was at home and my siblings too, and my cousins too. So we were just at home playing. And I have always like known Malik as a very, very talented kid. Like, he's a very talented kid. So I used to have this idea that, okay, and these two funny things that we do at home, let me take the advantage of social media. But I'm always like, ah, okay, let me think about this. But before then, I used to do comedy videos on Instagram too. So that's like where the idea yeah. came from. So there was a video of Kanye West. It was vibing then, and it was vibing to a Nigerian song, and that particular video went so viral. So I just saw Malik doing the same thing Kanye West was doing. I was just laughing, I was just like, the fact that Malik can actually make me laugh like this. Why don't I just make start like post this thing up? Yeah. And the idea now came and I was like, okay, finally come. This thing you are doing, make it more dramatic. Let me record you. Let me film you. Then I called me so my me stay near him. Do like the other guy. I showed I showed them the video again. Then they did it perfectly well. I just laughed and I posted it online. Then when I posted it and I was like People were like, hey, this is funny. Then people started posting. And I was like, oh, what are we going to call ourselves now? Uh, 
no nerve. But we are native of Kurudu. If you talk to our Filele, this is where our mom and dad, this is where we've been staying all our life. Let's call, our, let's call ourselves the Kurudu boys. Although people will be like, ah, oh, the Kurudu boys, oh, it's, not the, it's not those bad boys that do stop up. We don't care because we are proud of where we are from, where we came from then. I just named it the Kurudu boys. Then, to, 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 my, to my greatest surprise, and my dad, so he was really, really surprised. Like, he was surprised to the extent that he went out and he saw people talking about Kurudu boys. And he was like, ah. See, community law far away. That's is this thing really serious? Not until like videos of DJ Copy, Davido, and we were just doing our own fashion. Like it's like so funny to see big people with that, with their exotic cars, and we customize our wheelbarrow, doing the same thing they are doing. People are like these kids are out of this world. They just laugh about it. So since then we've been we've been. Thank you, sir. So since then, how old is Ikorodu Voice? Uh, Ikorodu Voice, 2018, late 2018. That was when? Eight, nine, nine, ten. Yeah, it was about eight. How did you go to school? Ah, uh, school. I. I found it kind of sad. Yes, I know. I'm. I'm saying like, I. Because me, when I was in school too, so I understand and how important education is. So what we do is Monday to Friday, school, weekends, videos. So that's, and it's really, really tired. The Lagos State Governor, Wajide Saolu, says his administration is committed to developing the creative industry in Lagos in order to remain the number one destination for art, music, and other talents. Some of your work. Right, and like every other person, I really don't know, you know, um, where you've gotten the energy and the raw talent from. But I tell you, it's really original. It's something that is uh, that is very rare, you know, um, and given the fact that nobody. You didn't go to any form of diction or any form of finishing school. These are just raw talent, you know, from your senior brother and just, you know, reviewing and reviewing yourself. Um, I can only say to you that um, the world is watching you. It's not only Nigeria. You know, the world is watching you. And stay focused, right? Um, at some point, they will come for you. Um, we will support you, right? Um, but like your brother had said, education is also important because that will also give you a lot of liberation. And it will give you opportunity to get even to places where you can never imagine. And like he said, if you can dream it, if you can imagine it, then you can do it, right? So never never take no for an answer, right? Each time you fall, you try and get up again. Each time you make a mistake, try and recorrect yourself again. Because you might not get it right the first time, the second time, the third time. There was someone that said she tried to be a beauty queen for 14 times, but on the 15th time, you got it. So don't give up. Don't quit. Sometimes life will throw all sorts at you, but just stay focused. The Lagos State Government has inaugurated a committee chaired by veteran actor Richard Mufe Damijo to boost tourism and entertainment in Lagos. The committee was inaugurated by the Governor Abajade Sonulu at the Lagos House in Marina, citing intervention and schemes by the state committee will boost and fund the sector most affected by the pandemic. The governor added that the state carefully selected five key practitioners in the industry to lead to be supported by four government officials to limit bureaucracy for the committee to achieve its objectives. Today's event 
is really to now signpost all of those buckets of intervention and bring it back home. We realized that we set up a one billion tourism fund last year. That probably still didn't get it well because on the tourism fund, right, um, there are lots of conditions and conditionalities that will come to it, you know, and, and, and how you engage it. Maybe we don't have as much drawdowns as we have expected. So we said, okay, let's look at the real, you know, movie industry. This is an industry that is known all over the world. I hear after Nollywood, after Bollywood, um, sorry, after Hollywood and Bollywood is actually Nollywood. And we can indeed transform that Nollywood into a, a global, it's already a global brand, but it can commercialize the numbers to a, to, a, to a level where it can compete with both the Hollywood and the Bollywood. And so one of the things that we realized is an impediment to a lot of our producers and film um, 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 directors is funded. So we said, OK, we can intervene as a government. We don't know it, but let's put together professionals, people of impeccable character, people that have demonstrated their capacity in that industry. And so that's why we have carefully selected the five men you know, from the private sectors. And from the resume, you can see that each one of you had been well sought out. You know, we didn't look at race or tribe or where you come from. You're in Lagosian, you're in Nigeria. We believe that what we're about is to ensure that we can create the very best essence of our being, right? And so that's why we've carefully selected you. And we believe you create time for us and for your industry that you are so very passionate about. And this committee, supported by four government officials, so that they can, they can wither through the, the fortress of governance and ensure that there are no bureaucracy. Chairman of the committee, RMD, as he is fondly called, assured the team will put its best towards actualizing the needed growth in the industry. But uh, you have bestowed on us, and on behalf of the um, other committee members, this is to assure you that all of us are very passionate about the industry, and having an enabler um, is more than what we can ask for. We are constantly craving uh, an enabling environment. I don't think that um, when the governor of, uh, somebody described it as the fifth largest economy in Africa, or in West Africa, um, becomes your enabler, I don't think you will have any excuse not to perform. So may I, on behalf of my committee members, assure Mr. Governor, and of course, Lagosians here present, that we will do everything in our, uh, in our capacity to make sure that uh, uh, that which you have envisioned uh, will come to pass. Other entertainment sector members of the committee include Tunje Kelani, Mo Abudu, Kunle Afalaya, Peace Ayim Osigwe, alongside government representatives. Today's episode will be focused on the education sector as Governor Abajide Saolu set out to commission some special projects in schools across the state. Many of those gathered here are products of public schools or who could complete favorably with the highest international standards. The schools which tutored some of the leaders of today now lay in decay. The Lagos State Government has been on a renovation campaign for some of these schools to bring them up to standard. The major features of, this, of, the, of, the, of the school has basically classrooms, corridors, toilet banks, vertical movement, staircases, principals, teachers, room, sick bay for schools, and other amenities surrounding the school. The Commissioner for Education in the state notes there are several more to be done as several projects were left uncompleted over time. Inside the Obi Schools Complex, there are five schools. La Siama is upgrading a number of buildings while the Angus Model College, a 54-room complex, is nearing completion as well. 
And about 10 minutes away from here, we have the St. Joseph Secondary School, which is also nearing completion. Last year it was 11.2% share of the budget. This year it is 12.7% or thereabout. It's a good one. But we will not hesitate to hit the hammer on 30% for education. The governor says improving the standard of education will go beyond renovations, challenging teachers to give their very best. I want to assure all our parents and guardians that the standard of education in Lagos State will continue to rise and will not stop at ensuring that we put the very last resource in place to ensure that our schools become a positive reference point across the nation and the entire group at large. Finally, I want to charge, I want to charge all our community leaders, our school administrators, our staff, our teachers, and the entire population in our education ecosystem to take charge, to keep this edifice, to maintain this infrastructure. The state governor says 300 new infrastructure in schools will be completed with new ones to be commissioned in no distant time. Our focus is to make sure that the out-of-school uh, children menace is drastically reduced. That is why we have designed a program called Project Zero. And the idea behind Project Zero is to be able to provide you know, social economic uh, support uh, to the parents and the people of, the, of, of, the, of our schools so that they can come to school. The premium bling place in education is already generating dividends as students from the state are already being recognized in their various disciplines. This includes the teachers. Isn't this a great time to be a student in Lagos? But that completes our episode for this week. Until next time, I am Wilson Amoni and this is Lagos. <laughs>